Welcome to another episode of Track It. In this episode, we're going to be putting the engine together. We are at AW Motorworks today, and Alex is going to be very kindly lending his expert eye whilst we assemble it. Um, we're going to go through the parts, and it's going to be a point of view video, so let's jump in and start assembling it. Point zero four to zero point zero seven five. Yeah, so we're well then, because we're about 0.55, which is pretty much bang in the middle. So that's fine.
Right, now this thing's together, let's go over the specification and the work that it took to get to this point. There was a huge amount done both on and off camera, so I've got to use the list, otherwise I'm going to forget something. This is the bottom end that we took apart in last episode, and it's the very low mileage one with only 23,000 miles on it. We measured the crank, and that was in very, very good condition and within the right specification, but what I didn't do on camera was measure the bore. So I did do that with a dial bore gauge, and they were also perfect spec, so this was a very good base. On the bottom end then, I've had the Crank Polish Hastings Piston Rings, genuine Renault bearings, and it's got ARP rod bolts. I've had um, each of these cylinders honed, so this is a standard bore size with um, the original pistons and rods that came in this. It's also had a skim on the bottom, so on the sump face and the head face as well, and that's to six thousandths of an inch off, and that's only just to clean it up. It has to have the bottom one done to allow it to sit flat on the machine to have the top one done properly. It's had a new oil pump, and um, on the back here we've got the turbo drain, which is the factory place that a Megan turbo would drain into. On the Clio, it's just a flat section on the casting of the block, so you have to drill it out. And on this one, I've got a 3.8 NPT going into an AN10, which will allow us to do our turbo drain later on. On the top end, this looks completely standard, bar being pretty clean, but this is probably where the biggest amount of work has been done um, and also the biggest expense. It's a 182 cylinder head, so it's got a slightly different breather setup to the 172, but realistically, there's no difference other than that. Again, it's had a very light skim just to clean it up. Um, it's got one piece Supertech valves in them. So on a standard valve, you'd have the long bit and then you'd have the kind of the flared bit on the bottom. The, there is a join in between those two, which means that they can be a little bit weak um, when you're really going for it on track and bouncing off the limit. But um, these are one piece, so they are stronger and the exhaust valves are in canal to cope with the heat. Because it's got Supertech valves in it, I have had to put 1.2 millimeter valve shims in. And that's because the place on the valve that the collets lock into is slightly further up on the Supertech valve. So I've got those in there to maintain the spring rate on the Clio 197 valve springs. I've gone with 197 valve springs because they are a slightly higher spring rate than a standard 172 or 182 valve spring, but they are definitely not the expense of cat cam springs. So they're kind of an in-between ground. I've also had um, new valve seals on this, and because it's got new, valve, uh, new valves in it, it's also had new valve seats cut. Then I've got a 197 um, thermostat on the back of it, and between the head and the block is a Megan 1.3 millimeter head gasket. That's just to help with um, heat management in the engine, and it just slightly lowers um, the compression. I've got a couple of other bits. So I've got a new bottom pulley on this, and that's because on a uh, well, these cars are getting old now, really. So the rubber in this starts to perish. So I've got a brand new. One of those. We've also got a new water pump. Of course, it's had a new cam belt kit on it, um, but I've replaced the diffaser as well. Originally, I was going to use the one from the Duff engine that I took apart, but I didn't want that to be a silly mistake and ruin all of my expense. Um, I think that's it really. So I have you tried to use as much as I can that was original to this or these engines um, to make one a very good one, but you do end up buying a lot of um, parts along the way. That's just part of the process, but hopefully I will never have to do this again. That's it then. Appreciate it. that was quite a long one. I didn't get to do much talking at Alex's sadly because I was focusing so hard on getting this done and making sure I was doing it right that I couldn't focus on the two things at once. If you don't know who Alex is though, he is a fantastic Renault Sport specialist based in Essex. So if you've got any Renault Sport needs, then um, I'll put a link to his Facebook in the description below. And without him, I would have made some pretty fatal mistakes on this engine. So really, really big thanks and um, a shout out to him. In the next episode, we'll be going over all of the wiring that's needed to run this and also um, some slight changes on the interior of the cup. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another episode very soon. Mm -hmm.